Okay guys, uh, hello and welcome everyone. In this tutorial video, I'm going to show you the um, different structures of the heart on the plastic uh, model. Well, first of all, if you look to the heart um, as an overview, you will see the heart is like pyramidal shape and you know the pyramid has an apex and of course pace so always the apex is opposite to the um, base of the heart now this is the apex of the heart and this is the pace of the heart i will show you after a couple of minutes now um, the heart has anterior surface and apex pace when you say pace, that means we are talking about the posterior surface of the heart. And it has diaphragmatic surface. This is the diaphragmatic surface of the heart, in which the heart lies on this surface. So the heart lies on the diaphragmatic surface. Now, you know that the apex of the heart is formed by mainly by the left ventricle while the pace of the heart if you look here to the back this is the pace of the heart or posterior um, cells of the heart formed mainly by both atria either the right atrium and uh, the left atrium so both of them plus the uh, coronary veins either the right or and the left plus the root of inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava so the right atrium left atrium and the pulmonary veins right and left superior and inferior as well plus to the root of uh, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava all of these structures form the base of the heart that's related to the esophagus now what else we have also the inferior surface of the heart this is the diaphragmatic surface of the heart that's formed mainly it's you know it's um uh, lies on against the diaphragm that's why it's called diaphragmatic surface and it's formed from the um, right ventricle and the left ventricle back again to the um, to the anterior surface uh, of the heart you know the anterior surface of the heart formed mainly by the right ventricle uh, with a contribution uh, from uh, right atrium and left ventricle so it's formed from um, right atrium, right ventricle, and left ventricle. Also, from the anterior surface of the heart, we can see the root of the great vessels, including the root of pulmonary trunk and the uh, ascending uh, aorta and the um, uh, superior uh, vena cava. Now, you know guys that the heart composed from four chambers let us remove the right auricle of course if this is the right auricle this is the left auricle okay let us open it and let us remove the anterior um, uh, part of the of this model so to see the uh, two ventricles okay so you can see the um, right atrium here and we have right ventricle left atrium and left ventricle now if you look to the internal surface of the auricle of the right auricle and even the left auricle it's like rough ridded because of musculi bictinati or the bictinate muscle but the behind the presta terminalis the 
uh, wall of the atrium is smooth as you see here now there are a couple of openings of uh, in the right atrium including the superior vena cava and opening for the inferior vena cava from here this is the superior vena cava and this is the inferior vena cava both open into the right atrium okay what else you see here is the fossa ovalis which was in the fetus patent foramen known as foramen oval foramen it was an foramen with oval shape so it's called foramen oval but after pearl um, it closed and uh, it becomes like a remnant um, and known as fossa ovalis now we what we have also just uh, medial to the opening of inferior vena cava we have a small opening for the coronary sinus this is the coronary sinus if you look to the back of the heart you will see this vein this vein is called coronary sinus that drains the blood from the heart itself it drain it of course into the right atrium so this is the opening of coronary um, sinus uh, so uh, I think if you talk about the uh, as we talk about the inferior vena cava you see here like a rudimentary uh, valve which is like a ridge and there's a variation between people sometimes larger than that sometime smaller than that and sometimes it's absent and it's not exist at all however the blood comes from the superior vena cava inferior vena cava opening of coronary sinus to the right atrium then it moved to the right ventricle through this valve this valve is known as tricuspid valve this is the tricuspid valve now let us move to the um, right ventricle you will see that the uh, you will appreciate the thickness of the right ventricle which is smaller than the left ventricle look at the papillary muscles here of course there are three groups of papillary muscle including the um, anterior group and posterior group and the septal one which is like not uh, very clear in this plastic model but I would say it's enough to see the papillary muscle um, I think we need to record another video on uh, um, plastinated heart so once the blood comes to the right ventricle it will be pumped up through the uh, uh, through this area which is known as conus arteriosus or the infantibulum which is smooth compared to the rough uh, surface of the uh, ventricle of course you look at the valve and um, there's like a cord here which is known as corda tendini that connected between the cusps of the valve and the babillary muscles now once the blood pumped in against the um, pulmonary trunk so they will open these cusps this is the pulmonary uh, valve it has three cusps right so and uh, you know that the pulmonary uh, valve located between the right ventricle and the pulmonary uh, a trunk um, so to prevent the uh, blood from uh, return back to the right ventricle so this is the pulmonary trunk that divided um, into the right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery shifted to the left side guys you'll see the um, lift the left auricle and let us open this 
and see the left atrium okay this wall is between the left atrium and right atrium and look to the fossa ovalis here and on the other side is the fossa ovalis so this is the interatrial symptom between two atria however you can see also that there are four openings in the left atrium and you know that the left atrium located posteriorly however look to the um, right pulmonary veins either the superior one or inferior one and to the left pulmonary veins either superior or inferior one as well they drain the blood from the right and left lungs I mean the oxygenated blood once the blood the oxygenated blood reaches the uh, left atrium it drains into the through the bicuspid valve this is the bicuspid valve as you see here to the left ventricle look to the wall of the of the left ventricle thicker than I would say two to three times than the compared to the right however <clears throat> sorry look to the uh, there is a septum between two ventricles this is interventricular uh, septum also there is that uh, two groups of papillary muscles connected to the uh, cusp by cordy um, uh, tendony so then the blood will be pumped from the left ventricle through the aortic valve this is also aortic valve looked also the aortic valve has three cusps similar to the pulmonary valve both the pulmonary valve and aortic valve are known as semilunar valves and guys uh, we have uh, if we look here we can see the first part of the aorta that's known as ascending aorta then at the level of horizontal plane between T4 and T5 the ascend the arch of aorta started and at the same time ends you know there are three branches uh, arise from the arch of aorta from the right there is a brachiocephalic trunk because it's larger than the uh, artery so that's why it's known as trunk so this is the brachiocephalic trunk and there is a left common carotid artery and left subclavian artery also we can see here uh, a small ligament that's known as ligamentum arteriosum that was a patent um, uh, vessel between the uh, pulmonary um, uh, I would say pulmonary trunk and the arch of aorta it was known as ductus arteriosus to um, redirect the blood in the fetus that uh, gets into the um, right ventricle and pulmonary trunk and then shift it back to the arch of aorta now you know some authorities um, say that the ductus arteriosus between the bifurcation of the or at the point is between the point of bifurcation of pulmonary trunk so this is the point is of bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk into right pulmonary artery and uh, left pulmonary artery so some authorities uh, mentioned that it's between the arch of aorta and the point of bifurcation of pulmonary trunk some of them say that's between the arch of aorta and left pulmonary um, artery so uh, mostly the most accepted uh, uh, one is that the uh, I know it's a plastic model so it's not accurate when I'm person but mostly I would say it's between the arch of aorta and the point of bifurcation 
of pulmonary trunk. So uh, what we have also, let us um, cover it again and uh, see the uh, landmarks of the heart. You know, because there is an interventricular uh, septum, this septum that divides the, uh, separates the right ventricle from left ventricle, it creates at the surface a kind of a sulcus. This is the sulcus. This sulcus is the anterior interventricular uh, sulcus. So, because it's between the right ventricle and left ventricle. So, this sulcus is known as anterior interventricular sulcus because if you go to the diaphragmatic surface of the heart in the back here you would see guys the um, right ventricle and left ventricle and in between there is posterior interventricular sulcus so in the anterior it was anterior posteriorly it's the posterior interventricular sulcus now what we have also we have a sulcus that encircles the heart um, it's like a crown this sulcus is known as coronary sulcus okay let us move all the way around the heart again this sulcus is the coronary sulcus okay so it encircles the whole heart and separates the atria above from ventricles below back also here this sulcus the coronary sulcus separates as you see here the base of the heart this is the base of the heart right this is the base let me um, cover it again here so okay uh, there we go so is the base of the heart or the posterior uh, surface and the diaphragmatic surface so the coronary sulcus separates the base of the heart from the diaphragmatic surface and um, again i will remind you guys that the heart rests or lies on the diaphragmatic surface like this right uh, what do we have also here I think let us shift to the um, coronary artery and uh, veins. So this is again the ascending um, aorta and it has two male branches. The right coronary artery, which is you can see it here. So this is the right coronary artery. And on the left side, and below the pulmonary trunk, here is another artery arises from here. So this is the left coronary artery. So we have the right coronary artery and left coronary artery. So the left coronary artery um, passes between the pulmonary trunk and left auricle. So this is the left coronary artery. Once it arises, below the pulmonary trunk it divides into two branches let us leave it for now and shift to the right coronary artery this is again the right coronary artery it has a couple of branches which is not exist here and i'm not going to ask you about them but there is one uh, for the uh, pulmonary um, uh, uh, for the pulmonary uh, trunk which is known as right conus branch you know remember the conus arteriosus 
here is the entrance of the pulmonary trunk anyway so there is a right conus branch should be here and in 60% of us guys there is another branch from the right coronary artery to the SA node this is a branch in this direction opposite to that one right known as sinoatrial node branch anyway so the the right coronary artery uh, passes guys through the coronary sulcus as you see here and it gives uh, a couple of two to three branches known as anterior ventricular branch these are anterior ventricular branch one two mostly between two and three so these anterior ventricular branch to supply the right ventricle Okay, let us continue, guys. Look, look at the border between the anterior surface and the diaphragmatic surface. So this border, this margin, also supplied by an artery that's known as right marginal artery. So, sorry, we can see here the... Uh, the third ventricular artery so uh, as i mentioned we have anterior ventricular branch two to three this is one two and this is the third one anterior ventricular branch and on the margin we have a right marginal branch or you can say marginal branch at the margin well it uh it extends toward the apex but for example, Moore in his um, uh, clinical anatomy textbook mentioned that it will uh, not reach the apex. But uh, Susan Standring in uh, the Grace Anatomy mentioned that some people, in some people, the marginal art is long enough to reach the apex. However, let us continue with the uh, right coronary artery. Um, also, it gives an arterial branch not shown here. So we have conus branch, sinoatrial branch, an atrial branch itself, anterior ventricular branch two to three, and one very easy important branch which is the marginal branch. And let us continue with the right coronary artery in this in the coronary sinus back, and now. At this point, you know this point that between the two ventricles and two atria, or I would say between the two interventricular septum and interatrial septum, this area known as crux, C -U -R -U -X, C-U-R-U-X, crux, crux of the heart. So at this point, the right coronary artery divides into um, I would say two branches. One goes down in the posterior interventricular sulcus and it takes its name from this sulcus. So this branch is the posterior interventricular artery or branch and also Clinically, it's known as posterior descending branch. Posterior descending. Because we have anterior descending. So, this is the posterior descending branch, which is a branch of right coronary artery. And also, the other branch is the posterior lateral ventricular branch. Posterior lateral ventricular branch that innervates part of the left ventricle on the diaphragmatic surface. Look at the posterior uh, descending branch or posterior interventricular branch. It gives like a septal uh, a branch to innervate the uh, posterior one-third of the ventricular septum. Here is deep to here, there is a ventricular septum. So the interventricular septal branch uh, supplies 
posterior one third of that septum. Of course, excluding the apex, so it's not the excluding the apex, of course. Okay, that's about the right coronary artery, and I would say, guys, 67 of us, the 67 of us, or of people, the posterior interventricular artery is a branch of right coronary artery, and because of the branch of right coronary artery, those people known as right dominance. Now, let us move back here to the left coronary artery. So guys, in the left coronary artery, which is larger than the right coronary artery it divides into once it exits below the pulmonary trunk it divides into left descending branch or it's known as LAD right so but I would say for now it's in the anterior interventricular sulcus so this artery takes its name from that sulcus, so it's known as anterior interventricular artery. Remember, this is the anterior interventricular artery, which is a branch from left coronary artery. But if you remember, in the right coronary artery, once it goes to the back and it reached the intervent posterior interventricular sulcus. It gives this a branch. This a branch is the posterior interventricular artery or posterior descending. But back here to the um, left coronary artery, this is the anterior interventricular artery or left anterior descending most in the um, clinicians uses uh, clinicians use the uh, lat left anterior descending so i will use maybe mostly the left anterior descending the other second branch other than the lat is the circum flex circum is just like moved back in the coronary sinus and uh, flexes to the back back to the uh, left anterior descending that um, uh, lodged in the anterior uh, interventricular uh, sulcus it gives like interventricular septal uh, branch to supply the um, anterior two-third of interventricular septum remember that the posterior one-third of interventricular septum is supplied by the posterior descending which is a branch from right coronary anyway so the lad has uh, uh, septal uh, interventricular septal branch and uh, it has another branch that's known as diagonal branch. This is, uh, I would say, diagonal branch. So let us move with the uh, circumflex artery to the back in the coronary sinus. And it gives on the margin again another marginal artery, but on the left. So it's known as left marginal artery. So then uh, this is the uh, end of the circumflex. However, the anterior or the lad, the left anterior descending, continues to the apex, and most of the time, I would say, it uh, goes back and communicates and make like anastomosis with the posterior descending or the posterior interventricular artery. So there are variations in the anastomosis. There, is, there are about 30 anastomoses in the uh, heart. Not one, not two, not three. Two, 30, three, zero. 
So this is about the coronary arteries. Now, what about the uh, coronary uh, veins that drain the blood from the heart itself? So starting again, guys, from the right side here, this is the right side of the uh, heart, and you will appreciate the existence of this small vein. Uh, let me show you. Okay, here's the. So remember, this is a superior vena cava, right? So this is the right side. This is the right uh, auricle. So this is the right coronary artery, guys, right? And this is the right marginal artery okay so there's a vein here accompanies the right marginal artery which is the right marginal vein now the right marginal vein accompanies with the small cardiac vein and the small cardiac vein will uh, accompanies the right coronary artery in the coronary sulcus and let us move back guys here and follow the small cardiac vein and you will see the small cardiac vein will unite with a vein in the middle between the two ventricles the vein is accompanied with in the uh, it's lodged in the posterior interventricular sulcus so this vein is the middle cardiac vein so you have the small cardiac vein um, a company uh, um, with the uh, companies with the uh, right coronary artery then it uh, unites with the middle cardiac vein between the two ventricles from the back on the or inferiorly from the diaphragmatic surface and let us wait. I know it will. You will say, okay, it drains in the uh, uh, coronary sinus. But let us see the coronary sinus from the left. So let us move back to the uh, left. So this is the right. You know the small cardiac vein. But let us move to the left. Okay. Here is another big vein, which is the greater cardiac vein. Always, you have to use the this word cardiac. When you when you talk about the veins in the heart, you have to to mention cardiac. Small cardiac vein and the right, opposite to it on the left, there is anteriorly there is um, a great cardiac vein that's uh, lodged in the anterior interventricular sulcus then it ascends uh, up and accompanies with the circumflex artery in the coronary sign in the coronary sulcus let us move to the back guys here and see the um, the great cardiac vein uh, that continues as um, coronary sinus this is the coronary sinus it's a big vein so of course at the posterior surface of the left ventricle there is a vein here which is um, uh, close to the marginal one but it's known as um, posterior cardiac vein this is the posterior cardiac vein so all drain into the coronary sinus that will drain in the right atrium as i mentioned you earlier in this video here is the opening of the coronary sinus right so again quickly let us uh, back to the vein on the right side we have a uh, right marginal vein with a small cardiac vein back here and on the left side there is a great cardiac vein back also with the circumflex artery and um, uh, another attribute uh, from the heart which is the posterior uh, uh, posterior cardiac vein 
So great cardiac vein, posterior cardiac vein, middle cardiac vein in the uh, posterior interventricular sulcus. All guys will uh, drain into coronary sinus, and coronary sinus drains the blood to the right atrium. Okay, um, maybe this is, uh, I would say, um, everything about the uh, vessels of the heart. Um, still, uh, maybe I can explain. Somebody can say, okay, you mentioned this is the posterior cardiac vein, but where is the anterior? Okay. Here is, guys, on the right side, there is um, uh, veins here. Uh, accompanies the uh, veins accompany the anterior ventricular arteries these veins known as anterior cardiac vein because this is the posterior great so this is the anterior cardiac vein um, you know they open directly into the right atrium and finally there is a uh, little small veins uh, known as veins of Thibisius. Uh, so Thibisius uh, is, a, I think, a German anatomist or so. So he found that there are a couple of veins, small veins, distributed along the heart. They drain the blood into the right atrium mainly and drift right ventricle. And some you will find uh, some hearts, you will see some of them in the left atrium, but rarely in the left ventricle. So, uh, thank you for uh, watching uh, this session, and uh, I hope you find uh, value in it.